The following is a deep dive, a dissection, a review, an analysis of one of the funniest shows on any kind of a television platform, including news. That is MSDNC's Read Out, starring Joy Reid as Joy Reid, the eponymous Read Out, which I call Read Out of Her Mind because when you listen to her and her guests for any appreciable amount of time, you realize one of two things. Either one, she is making this up because this is a particular role she's had to maintain in order to, to, to amass the millions she has acquired by virtue of this propaganda fest, or two, she's out of her mind, including her guest. I don't think she's out of her mind. I think it's all contrived. I think it's professional wrestling. I think it's all a work, but that's me. Second, you've got to mention this, the hair. It's just superb. It is. It covers the spectrum of, I, I mean, there there is literally nothing, uh, or very few things, I think, in the world that are as fascinating as the particular hairstyles which she um, uh, uh, fashions and, and wears. And I, I, I think, in her heart of hearts, thinks that you believe um, is, in fact, real. Now, let, let's take this this last particular uh, case, this last particular show, and let me just, if I could, show you what you might have missed, what you might have been uh, paying attention to, were you one of the six people who were actually watching this in the first place. So let me bring up, this is, this is Joy Reid, and well, the beginning of her show, this is, this is called, this is from Read Out, and I'm going to, um, have you watch this particular piece? This is uh, this is of course Speaker Mike uh, Johnson uh, speaking, and I want to say a few words regarding Mr. Johnson. Here we go. I'm going to announce to you today, uh, here standing alongside President Trump, that we will do everything within our power to ensure that we do have free and fair elections in this country. If we don't have that in a constitutional republic, we have nothing. Now, we also don't have anything, and this is important, we also don't have anything in the event that we were to be ever uh, uh, subsumed and completely relegated to the ash heap of liberty were we to lose control over the intelligence agencies, which, which apparently we have through your leadership. Now, somebody has suggested, not I, mind you, that maybe he's been compromised or blackmailed. That's the only reason why anybody could have changed their position that quickly as to FISA. But that, of course, is for another time. Let's go back and let's listen to this incredible statement followed by Ms. Reed's uh, uh, reaction. It's the basis of who we are as a nation, and we owe that to the American people. And so what we're going to do is introduce legislation to require that every single person who registers to vote in a federal election must prove that they're an American citizen. Now imagine this. They didn't have this. <laughs> this this was not the rule. This was not the law. This was not thought of as being important. But now, you know what? Maybe it's a good idea for us to be able to have some type of regulation that that causes or forces or or, or ensures that all voters prove that they're a citizen. How neat that is. First. <laughs> yep. Those prominent election deniers have a plan. Stop right there. Election deniers. Okay, this is this is this is one of the things that they must do. You 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 check these terms off. An election denier. This is very critical because remember when Stacey Abrams denied her election, or excuse me, challenged it. That was okay. When Hillary Clinton basically challenged her election, claiming it was Vladimir Putin and Russian, you know, uh, connivance, that was okay. Those weren't election deniers. That was a different story. Even when Al Gore said, hey, wait a minute, the pregnant chads and this and that went to the Supreme Court. That wasn't election denying. This is, but then again, what are you going to do? This is a part of the script. Here we go. And to further undermine our elections, but trying to make voting harder. Now, before trying to make voting harder <laughs> by merely saying, here's my card, here's my name. This, this is so difficult to begin with. I don't know. Many people suggested a while back, not I, mind you, and I'm sure a Ms. Reed out didn't. As well. I don't think so. But some people suggested that, that requiring 
uh, people, minorities included, to have a, a driver's license or some type of ID. This was racist because, well, uh, because it just is. Before I go any further, non-citizens, zoom in on me here, cannot vote in federal elections and have not <laughs> been able to do so for decades. It's literally illegal. Now, th th here, here, here we go. And this is this this may come as a shock because this goes to show you how Ms. Ms. Readout is. <laughs> I don't. I mean. Does she not know anything about election fraud? Not not election denial, but but does she does she believe? Let me get this straight. She's denying the existence of election fraud because it's against the law. She might also deny murder rates being what they are, because as you know, murder is against the law. This is this is the mentality. This is this this is the script. What is she? 30 seconds into the show? And this is the lunacy, but but let's let's continue. Literally. <laughs> also, it was Donald Trump who tried to steal the 2020 election with help from Congressman Mike Johnson, who helped. Okay, this is important. He tried to steal the 2020 election. Again, steal it with help. I mean, let, let, let's make sure we hear this one again. Listen to this. Also, it was Donald Trump who tried to steal the 2020 election with help from Congressman Mike Johnson, who helped recruit 125 House Republicans to sign on to a legal brief that asked the Supreme Court to overturn Biden's wins in four key states. John Imagine that. Imagine to steal the election, steal it by going through the Supreme Court by having an application of the rule of law in order to perhaps readdress an allegation of botched or contaminated um, a franchise. But I digress. Johnson, using his credentials as a constitutional lawyer, also helped formulate the legal theory to decertify the election on January 6th. So no, maybe don't take... January 6th. Worried about January 6th, by the way, decertified. January 6th, January 6th. And this is very important. I want you to, to listen to me and, and, and hear, hear me out on this one. This is important. Years ago, uh, Joe Biden was asked the question, or he... He it was involved in a conversation involving the suggestion that the Second Amendment was important for citizens because it prevented tyranny. It prevented uh, individuals from being um, uh, subjugated or overrun by a rogue government. And Joe Biden uh, said, in essence, that in the event there were attempts to uh, for the government to to overthrow it, and or if if you wanted to fight the government, excuse me, you would need F-16s and nuclear bombs and the like because you you cannot do this. It is impossible for you to 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 fight back. In essence, to overthrow a rogue government. Yet, yet, Ms. Readout and others want you to believe that on January the sixth, a bunch of pot-bellied, cami-wearing eye-patched, Valkyrie-helmeted, Sonny Bono-vested invitees to the Capitol in some cases could have actually uh, been uh, involved in the insurrection, in the reversal, in the revolution, in the, in the, in the overthrow of our country. You, you got to have it both ways, or you can't have it both ways. Let, let's continue their recommendations seriously, you know, unless you have a deal with the RNC to pay for your legal fees. <laughs> that can happen if you're in the family. Back with me, Molly Jong Pass and Jay Jordan. You, you live. By the way, little term of art, little word, please say people's names correctly. They were nice enough to show up to the show. Say their names. I didn't catch that. But listen to this brilliant analysis. People who are not, you can't vote in an American election if you're a non-citizen. The end. <laughs> Go you can't vote in an election unless you're a citizen. Meaning, meaning that apparently there is no need for this application of identity because you 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 can't. You can't. It it cannot be done. It's never done. There's no provisional ballots. Nobody shows up with fake IDs. Nobody nobody says that. No, it's it's never happened because that's the law, right? And and therefore they could not. They're also, by the way, could not be a January six because, as you know, insurrection. And um, seditious conspiracy are also against the law. Going to Mar-a-Lago to investigate election integrity, that's like <laughs> listening to more money, more problems to find out if Diddy did it. <laughs> the woman on the left right now is trying to say, is she saying parenthetically, I have no idea what this man's talking about. I have no idea. And I'm not even sure why I'm here 
Okay. This, by the way, is the obligatory comedian. And this is a guy. Oh, this is Jay Jordan. Excuse me. Uh, this a com comedian. He's a comedian. Yeah, let me move this. And uh, he's, uh, he's, he's winning me over. What are we doing? I think they have a bias there. You went to Mar-a-Lago to say, we're going to make sure these things are above yes. and beyond legality. <laughs> yeah, right. They're not illegal. They're illegal, so we're going to do a law to make them more illegal. Yeah, <laughs> my favorite part of this is, like, did they not know there was this law? I mean, the, the Republicans are really good. You know, next week they have all these appliance laws, oh, right? Oh, the appliance laws are amazing. Next week is appliance law in Congress. Are I mean, amazing. Mike Johnson, with his one-vote majority, is so, I mean, if he were not who he is, I would yeah. feel bad for him. Yeah. Now, if that makes any sense to you, let me know. Okay. Just let me know. If that, if you got any of that, and if you learned anything from that, let me know. But he goes down there. He looks like you could tell this was Trump's idea. You know, it just was so. Do the thumbs up. Right. They're doing like the Freon in the Fridge Protection Act. They right. let our gas <laughs> like, stoves survive. Right. They're literally doing They're that. They're the gas stove. I, think, I think that Mike Johnson and Trump should do what Mike Johnson and his son did and just keep each other accountable <laughs> on what porn they keep, watch. Keep it accountable on the porn. Well, that's in the trial next week. We're going to talk about porn next week. And the lady, I love her, by the way. I think she's amazing. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Stormy. Well, let's talk about the Chicken Shack Trump. Okay, here's we're going to listen to this. This is important. The theme behind this is critical. That is that black people cannot in any way find themselves in agreement with President Trump. Black people don't. And if you see somebody who uh, is black and appears to uh, agree with President Trump, it is because they're either uh, a staged uh, follower that their belief or their following is insincere um, or, or that it's just, it's just not real because this couldn't, this couldn't happen. This couldn't happen despite the fact that during the Trump administration, African-American unemployment was at the lowest rate, among other uh, metrics. But this goes to show you this, this cannot be, this, this cannot be. All right. Listen to this, by the way, this readout. <laughs> Trump, uh, because you want to appeal to the blacks, you've already done sneakers. Now let's do chicken. Now, if I said that, well, let's play it. We've also knocked doors for you in the past for your past you re-election bid and when you ran the first time. Wow. Yes. I was interning for the GAGOP at that time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. By the way, this, this um, security fellow between uh, this woman and Trump is, uh, he, he is not budging. And if this is a contrived black event, there is a there is not a lot of warmth here. Uh, uh, Trump is is significantly back. This uh, I would imagine heavily armed security person with his earpiece um, in position is standing uh, between her and uh, 45. Oh, doing a lot for your tax credit reform bill and everything like that. Well, we so, took yeah. care of those they, colleges. Sure did, sure did, sure did. Much yeah. better than Biden did. So I was <laughs> Wow. Isn't that great? So I don't care what the media tells you, Mr. Trump. We support you. Uh, we support you. Okay, 4 p.m. We've been 4 p.m. Come here, let while. me give you a hug. Bless her, Candace Hart. Uh <laughs> now, uh, Candace Owens, apparently. Did you notice the Chicken Shack reference also? Did you did you just see? I mean, this this can't be. What you what what you what what you saw cannot exist in the real world. Bellman and Morehouse <laughs> Democrats put out a statement saying our goal is to simply reiterate our unequivocal beliefs about our beloved HBCUs. We do not support white supremacists. We do not. <laughs> well, I would sign on on that. I do not support white supremacists. I do not support convicted predators. Support them how convicted predators. He's a predator. We do not, apparently, we do not support voter suppression. We do not support liars. We do not support fascism. You notice how it went kind of from the specific to the rather general later on. Do not speak for us. White supremacists, by the way, parenthetical note right now. Have you ever met a white supremacist? Have you ever met a, uh, a white inferiorist or a black supremacist? And how does one manifest itself as a white supremacist? Number two, is that against the law? Because does that not does that not mean you believe you are supreme? I guess I'm not even sure. It's a term that is used with incredible frequency, but nobody really understands what it is. And we do not support a convicted predator. Okay. Now, do we have a separate show for all of the people who are 
have been convicted predators. But let us continue. Let us continue. support convicted predators. We do not support voter suppression. We do not support liars. We do not support fascism. Fascism. I would bet you right now. I'm just saying, call me crazy, but I would bet you that if we offered uh, 25 bucks and whatever it is, that Ms. Readout could not really define what actual fascism is under the Mussolini definition uh, or the or the March on Rome or anything even similar to that. Do not speak for us. I, I'm going to just tell you, as somebody who worked on campaigns, Secret Service has to go through that room. They're not just going to let anyone in there unless they're pre-screened. That lady said she was an intern for the Republican Party of Georgia. She used to work for Candace Owens' little firm. Her little thing, Blexit. Mm. Right. She's a... Okay. And... Okay. And... One of my favorite retorts. And plant, so we know that. And everyone in that room was pre-screened to be in that room. This was not him walking into a chicken shack and people being like, Trump. <laughs> walking into a chicken shack. I I don't know about you, but believe it or not, I think ex-presidents um, and their security, I think, is on everybody's uh, agenda, including uh, President Biden's ex-president status when he is supplanted. Uh, either before or on 2024. So your point is? Uh, also, you know he stole a couple of Polynesian sauces before you know he, he left. Did. You, you know, know he And did. doesn't know what to do with them. And also, I'm surprised he didn't try to go on Sunday because he doesn't know when they're open. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, look, God bless anybody trying to, to, you know, help themselves, especially in the world of comedy. You know, God bless them. But you've got to ask yourself the question, is this, what are we getting from? What's the point? Where's the substance? Or dare I dare I harken back to the notion of the Wendy's uh, days? Where's the beef? Okay, let's go back to uh, the, the idea that he's so desperate to show that the blacks love Trump. I had so many people. I Is he desperate to show that the blacks love Trump? Is he desperate to show that? Or did that happen? Or did it happen? It, it, I don't go on Twitter anymore because it's too, it's too Nazi. What? <laughs> too Nazi. But there were people on there trying to get in my attention by being like, oh, Joe is going to hate. Joe Reed is going to hate to see Donald Trump hugging a black. Oh <laughs> She's going to be enraged. Exactly like that. <laughs> they, they, oh, yeah. You know, they were shaking like that when they said it. It's, I mean, it's just so, it's so, it's like fundamentally so upsetting to think that this is, you know, I mean, it, it, man says all this racist stuff. He does all this racist stuff and then he thinks he can go to a restaurant and well let's it. be clear he thinks he can go wait a minute wait a minute. I... <laughs> did you did you catch did you catch any of this what was she saying let's go back a little bit here let's go to back. a chicken restaurant a chicken right. restaurant on, black people right. and go, see, see? see? They, love they love me as much as they love i hit the wrong one here excuse me i i, I want to hear this this is this is this Listen, listen to this, this, this befuddled attempt at her bill of particulars here. It's just so, it's so, it's like fundamentally so upsetting to think Why? that this is, you know, I mean, huh? man says all this racist stuff. He does all this racist stuff. And then he thinks he can go to a restaurant and. Well, let's it. be clear. He thinks he can go to a chicken restaurant. A chicken right. restaurant. Fill it right. with black people. Correct. And go, right. see, see, they love me. <laughs> they love me and the They chicken. love me almost as much as they love this chicken. <laughs> Now, now, the, the uh, Chick Fil A. Uh, I mean, I don't want to be. Don't, don't, please, 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 uh, uh, don't um, in any way um, let me read somebody's mind. But Chick Fil A, and if ever there is any overt and dare I say. Um, uh, uh, Hyper stylized repetition of cultural stereotypes it is on this show right. I I, and i will put it on the other side that you know even things like okay the biden administration is going to put out their own list of things they have actually done for african-american seven billion dollars affordable housing You've okay listen to this this is a good one this is what he has done for black uh voters and constituents got the, the you know the, the to me the big thing is the loan forgiveness right yes. that's actually a big deal hundred Loan forgiveness, which invariably the Supreme Court will bounce back at again because there's no talk about pandering, pandering. I think about this in the classic examples of the word pandering, loan forgiveness. Now, I, 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 I know I'm being perhaps a bit jaundiced. Maybe that's my perspective, but 
I would venture to say right now, if you could go over and depending upon the time, if you could wake up the president, um, maybe if he's not watching Matlock or Golden Girls or whatever he's doing in the afternoon and ask him, what were some of the signature legislation or pieces of legislation or programs that you signed to specifically target or benefit African-Americans, I'll bet you he couldn't mention any of these. $53 billion in student loan for bill- forgiveness. today. Right. Trump yeah. has tried to be like the first step back is me. That was literally a black congresswoman yeah. who did the first step. Mm-hmm. He signed it. Like, yeah. he's trying to take credit for things. But there is this question. Well, he freed Lil Wayne. Is that enough? <laughs> well, well, pardon Lil Wayne. And he's very... <laughs> and ASAP... Well, you and, know, but and he's got ASAP Rocky out of Sweden. Oh, yeah. <laughs> This is notice this poor one on the, on the left is saying, I have no idea who little Wayne, Wayne Newton, Wayne, Wayne, a Bruce Wayne. Isn't that Batman? I'm not yes, sure. That's hard. Listen. That's tough. Sweden can be tough. Sweden is a difficult place to be incarcerated. He got him home. He freed ASAP. Yeah. Right. But I mean, there is that meme that Republicans are so desperate to prove that the blacks love them now, that women love them. That it's yeah. the every- there is a meme. I think she said meme. There's a meme that Trump is so desperate to show. I don't think there's a, well, I'm sure if it's a meme, if this would qualify under the uh, Dawkins memetics, but I think it's, it's not, it's not a desperate move. It's a reality. Everyone loves what they're doing. Well, I think they should start by probably enacting policies that would actually help black people yeah. and women and hear me out, black women. I yeah, don't even I don't know. know. I don't know. I don't even know. I don't even know. And I, I do think that the Biden campaign is starting to feel a little bit more confident Yeah. because <laughs> They're feeling more confident. They're scared out of their wits. They have absolutely, have you read any, read the polls, watch what's happening. Everybody, but everybody realizes, and I'm sorry, I don't want to kick a dead horse. I think maybe, I don't want to say literally, but feeling confident. See, this is what's so great about the show. The show has nothing to do with facts. It's about perception and delusion. As Trump becomes more incoherent and as this abortion thing... As Trump becomes more incoherent. Again, I'm thinking, did you... Am I... Am I... Maybe it's me. ...becomes an absolute dumpster fire. Yeah. I think that that gives Democrats some more confidence if people turn out. Well, if you when you hear him, when you hear Trump talk, I mean, he is not a gifted orator. He has never been a gifted orator. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He is an orator. Okay. Okay. As as far as being a gifted orator, he's Bill Buckley. He's Gore Vidal. He's John Kenneth Galbraith compared to a man whose whisper has now turned into an incoherent grumble who walks around normally uh, in the White House in the mid-afternoon yelling who ordered the veal cutlet, who confuses his wife with his sister and the wife's... I mean, did did, did I? Did I hear that? But he does seem a little weirder than... Cognitive issues? I mean, he, he seems... He seems tired and he doesn't seem the sort of same, you know, in 2016, he was able to go from place to place to place. Sure. He doesn't quite make that kind of movement yet. And- Wait a minute. Trump's got how many he's at, how many he, he, he is currently right now uh, through through malignant lawfare. He is flying everywhere. He is he is going from, I'm sorry, court to rally to Mar-a-Lago playing golf playing golf this this what you are seeing right now this says it perfectly this is where you just create a reality that's not a reality you can say whatever you want about trump he may not be a great orator he may not be that he may not be a a loquacious he may not be stentorian he may not be mellifluous in his intonations that notwithstanding the man has the energy of somebody half his age compared to a person who right now, a friend of mine said it best, would you let Joe Biden drive you home from the airport? He somehow thinks that three weeks of a trial is going to really elevate him with swing voters. I just don't see the math. I mean, not knowing whether Nikki Haley and Nancy Pelosi, which is which. Yes. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me first, uh, this is now we're getting into the end of the show and it's just becoming, it's just degrading. Notice that the comedian, Mr. Comedian has no idea anything about the facts, but he, 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 uh, uh, his, his expertise appears to be uh, forced uh, 
bludgeoned comedy uh, while uh, applying an admixture of a uh, current, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, well, en entertainers, I guess. Might not mean you're in the strongest car. <laughs> also, we can't even skip over the fact that why is he, he why is he in Atlanta? Because right. he's uh, during a right. criminal case. Not he's not just case. hanging out right. in Atlanta. <laughs> that is a thing. criminal case. He went going for on. the chicken. He didn't go for he the went chicken. For the chicken. Hey, I'm not gonna pick a part. Uh, I mean, I can't. I think I have, but that's not the point. The point of this is simply this: the level of distortion now you can there's a lot listen if if she did a little better research versus slapping together this show and by the way i enjoyed it thoroughly because let me explain something it causes me and causes you to sit back and to ask ourselves well what really is the truth when you call trump incoherent do you know recently uh there was talk when he was in new york this is very interesting. When he was at the um, Radio City, he had Bill Clinton, who also is not exactly looking gangbusters, but significantly better. There are people on life support who look better than Joe Biden, but they were at uh, Radio City, and it was Bill Clinton, and it was, and it was Barack Obama, and uh, it was no, there was no, it was it was a flop. There were no pictures at all of anything about crowds or anything along those lines. What was interesting to note, though was that immediately thereafter, he had to go to, I think there was some kind of a fundraiser on Central Park West or, or South, I, I'm, I'm not sure. He had to stay the night. Word, word is it, he had to stay the night because he was winded. Trump, who used to come in, it comes from at two o'clock in the morning, he's, he's out and about, who, who, who can do rallies for two hours if he wants, who, yes, by the way, he is, in Atlanta, and I'm glad you brought that up, uh, sir. The the thing which is the most important to note is that he is there under this ridiculous corruption to, uh, corruption via RICO racketeering from the most corrupt, perjurious prosecutor in the annals of American juridical history, Fannie Willis. Yeah, he's there. Bring that up. In fact, Mr. President, please bring up Fannie Willis as much as possible. Now, look, the bottom line is this. Joy Reid is doing her job. I'm not going to sit here and uh, the, the, the show, nobody watches this. Nobody. The star of MSDNC is Rachel Maddow. What does she work, one day a week? How they stay in business, I have no idea. But God bless them. It's also home of Joe and Meager or Zika, the Zika virus, that show in the morning, which again is important to watch. And I want you to listen to me. If you can stomach it, listen to what they say, because you'll never be able to know one of two things. First of all, you got to know the strategy of the enemy. And number two, you have to know what the truth is. And they actually reinforce in my mind. The, I think the, the necessity and the benefit and the obviousness of President Trump to be reelected. Listen, let, let me leave you with this. Let me just say something very, very clear. And Ms. Reed out, you can listen to this as well. If for no other analogy, Donald Trump is chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is a, an application of what amounts to, in essence, a poison. Chemotherapy is something that will kill you. Chemotherapy is something that you don't want to go to first unless you have cancer. And America has a cancer right now. And it's not Joe Biden. Joe Biden is a marionette. He's an animatronic. He's a sock puppet. He is the dupe, the mindless dupe, as is the Democratic Party, which is being controlled by a virus, by a cancer called the shadow government, deep state, police state, intel state, ruling class, what, whatever you want to call these folks. They're not liberals. They're not left. They're not radical left. They are obstructionist. They're nihilistic. And they're, they have to be destroyed politically, politically, via this chemotherapy, kind of like the, the tamoxifen of politics, namely Donald Trump. And he may not be perfect in your mind. And he may, he, he, he may not be whatever it is. But the, and I'm, and I'm trying to clean this up. 
Do you want four more years of this? Okay. Do you want four more years of where we are now? It's a very simple thing, misery. Have you not looked around? Where do you live? What parallel universe? Do you want four more years of this? The answer is very loud and a very a very boisterous no. No. That's all. Thank you so much for watching, my friend. Please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. And I'd love to see what you, how you respond as you comment as you see fit.